Today's uh, shootout is going to be uh, with uh, most of the, uh, the Starship coils I have wound. This is a uh, number 17 gauge and it is interwoven wound, uh, 90, or 180 degrees opposite feeds. This uh, is a very uh, slow uh, winding process and I don't know if there's any advantage to it at all. Next we're going to have two mono wound Starship coils and these are around 21 turns of number 22 gauge wire and the latest coil I have wound which you've seen before is a bi-filer progressive uh, 24 point wind and this also has a radial filled C, C winding right here we're not going to use that winding today and actually I'm using that winding to hold these clips away there'll be a reason for that in just a moment and then we're going to have the classic rodent coil and this one's 24 uh, turns of number 26 wire we're going to use this wall transformer it's rated at 13.5 volts DC 1 amp current and the most important part of this test is a four stack of N52 magnets that I purchased from K and J Magnetics. I can't say enough good words for these people. That's where you should get your magnets. And when I got it, there was a, uh, a spacer here, and I tried to take these magnets off. I found it impossible for me to do it. I finally got one slid off, and as soon as the spacer came out, it just slammed right back on there. So I want to make note that this is the this is that we have two spacers and then we just have the, the two magnets touching each other. Don't know if this has any particular uh, effect on what we're going to be doing, but I want to note it. Also, we'll be using these egg magnets, which you can buy sometimes at Harbor Freight. Uh, you get four magnets for 88 cents, uh, two round ones and and two of the egg ones. Uh, the cat has played around with my round ones. I have no idea where they are, but these are very good to use to find the magnetic fields in the rodent or the Stark ship coil, uh, especially if you use a pulsating DC wall transformer, and we'll get into that very shortly. Okay, so for this test, the, the, the mono Starship coil is drawing just over 3 amps. I don't know what the voltage is. I'll have to get a meter across that. Okay, so the uh, voltage has dropped down to 7.51 volts from the start of unloaded 13 volts. And we have uh, 3.06 amps. So that's going to come out to about 25 watts. So if you think about that, it's, you know, it doesn't make any sense because the transformer says, well, maybe that's just the given rating at, at 13 uh, volts at 1 amp. Uh, that would be like, uh, what, 13 watts, and this is showing it's uh, around close to 25. I didn't use a calculator, so between 21 and 25 watts. So, very interesting. So, explain this levitation. The poles on this side are located 90 degrees from the start of the winding. So you'll have on a horizontal axis, like from this point to here, you'll have the north pole here, the south pole here, but on the opposite side, there'll be the south pole there and the north pole will be on the, the other side. And it's levitating right about, it's boy, it just, it pulls it, it wants to pull it right to that center where that gap is. Now, in an earlier video, somebody else's video, they were showing a rodent coil that they had one magnet in the center, and I remember he was running, I think, 55 volts DC. And when he turned it on, it, uh, the magnet didn't go anywhere, but the, the rodent coil jumped off the magnet. And when he reversed the polarity, uh, it just seemed like the, the magnet was pulled a little bit down. Watch, watch what happens with this one. The magnet, is, the magnet is immediately thrusted upward and notice it has switched positions now, it's in the levitating position. So 
this is a very, very interesting feature. And obviously, I can see all kinds of motors that could be made with this. You could make a, a, a reciprocal piston type motor having the, the magnet in it like a, a, a plastic sleeve. And uh, you could actually use two of them. Uh, it's really exciting. Now, uh, I also, while we're here, I want to take this magnet out. You've got to be careful where these magnets are. These are so powerful that if you have like a, a metal bracing underneath the table, it's going to influence your entire uh, readings. So I'm putting this over here farther, and I'm going back to, I want to show you how to use these ag magnets to find the, uh, the uh, magnetic poles. So we'll turn it back on again. And because it's a, it's a pulse DC, you're going to feel it. You can actually feel the strength of it. And you're going to notice that, well, actually, you can see how it lines right there, right across, 90 degrees. If you flip it over, you get the repulsive. But you can actually feel the strength because it's a pulsating DC. You can feel it in your, your fingers when you find the spot. So you could take and stack them like such. Now you should be able to uh, finally adjust the rotation between the two to give you a very compact or very spread out magnetic field. You still would have, and you got to make sure you've got the, the fields coupling and not reversed when you do this because you'll have a cancellation effect if you got them reversed. So let's do the same magnet experiment next with a rodent, okay? I'm going to put the magnet in the center like we've done before. And it's the same transformer. I'm going to turn the, the power on. The magnet just moves the scooch just a little bit. Can you believe that? I'm going to flip it over. And you can see that it just tries to levitate just a little bit on the, the one side. A tremendous difference in design between the Starship Rodent and, I'm sorry, between the Rodent and the Starship. You can see the magnetic, the magnetic field is so much stronger in the Starship. Uh, this was a very exciting experiment that I did. And uh, let's talk about some other things that are the advantage of the Starship. Uh, with the Starship, you can wind a pretty small coil. And when I talked to Marco Roden, he said that size of the coil makes no difference whatsoever. It's the number of turns. So you have a limiting factor with the classic Roden because you can only make that, that center hole so small because the bobbin that you need to have all the wire on is going to be, have to be very small and very long. So it's going to be very tedious, if almost impossible, to wind a Roden coil with a very small center diameter. But just the opposite with uh, the, the Starship. You can go ahead and uh, there's no bobbin. You're just winding between the 12, uh, 24 to 36 points. And so for different applications, you can make your Starship very, very uh, small. And so uh, I think after you people watch this, you're going to realize the, all kinds of possibilities with the Starship design. Think of the magnetic flux in this, think of this magnetic flux, flux top and bottom shaped much like a cooling tower on a nuclear generating uh, facility. And so uh, there's probably some things we can do to even shape it more. And so uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to do any more uh, shootouts because I'm convinced this is, this is the coil. Uh, I'm going to build uh, something like a, a window a motor. Uh, but then I may build something completely different, and I really think this is a key part to making a super Bedini uh, generator. So thanks for watching today. Appreciate it.